So now that we know what the thin and thick filaments are up to um, as a result of this calcium being released, specifically the thin filament here, and what the thin filament is doing at a normal resting state, let's look at what happens when both of these work together in order to perform the sliding filament model of muscle contraction. So what we'll do is underneath all of this, these are our sort of background notes, we're going to now basically state the steps continued. So remember in the previous two videos, two videos ago, we looked at all the neural input and messages that have to sort of propagate throughout the and within the muscle cell. We're basically continuing from that point, that final step where we said time for contraction. This is basically a continuation of that. This is just the background to understand how we're leading up to this. These specific steps are exactly what the sliding filament model is all about. And these are shown very nicely on figure 50.28. What we'll do is we'll summarize the steps and take a look at the figure as we go through each of these steps. So what we'll begin with is the following. Let's look at this myosin, this thick filament. What we notice is that the myosin head, it actually serves as a part of myosin as a molecule, an enzyme. It has enzymatic qualities because it is an ATPase, meaning that it can break down ATP. The myosin head, because it's an ATPase, breaks down enzymatically ATP, that high energy molecule. When you break down ATP via ATPase, that always turns ATP to its two substituent components, ADP plus an inorganic phosphate, PI. What you have to remember is that this process, when you convert ATP to ADP plus PI, this is the process that has energy within it. This is the process that creates energy. And I know that creates is not really a good word here because create, you know, energy can't be created nor destroyed, laws of thermodynamics, but just for ease of conversation. This is the moment at which we have energy possibility, specifically within this inorganic phosphate. This is a very sort of uh, high energy compound that is going to spark a lot of the entire rest of the process. So basically, when you have ATP on myosin at rest, ATP can be broken down. When it's broken down, it turns into ADP plus PI. This creates energy. What does this eventually, or subsequently, I should say, cause? This ATP hydrolysis, that's the event that just occurred to create ADP plus inorganic phosphate. ATP hydrolysis directly causes the myosin head, which was, remember, in a low energy state, so myosin head, to go from its original at rest state, low energy right here, to go from low energy to, because we have a lot of energy now, we have this inorganic phosphate, to what is termed a high energy state. That's only when ATP is broken down. Only when ATP is broken down. If ATP is just sitting there as ATP, this is a resting myosin head. But now we have caused some change. Myosin is going to go from a low energy to a high energy state if, and only if, ATP hydrolysis has happened, and that's what happened in the previous step. Big deal. What does this cause? This is going to cause the high energy. That's what we're going to term now. The high energy myosin head. It has all this energy in it, so might as well respect the energy. The high energy myosin head now is going to bind to an opening. It binds to a place that has been opened, which was right here, the MBS. The MBS is free because tropomyosin has moved away, because troponin changed its shape, because the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, as a result of the nervous message, the action potential that propagated within the myofibril, told it to. All of this happened. Now it's time to utilize what this did by doing this. High energy myosin head binds to the myosin binding site, specifically the open MBS, because of everything that happened here at the thin filament to the open MBS on, and we'll change it up and state actin. Remember, the actin is, of course, the thin filament. This moment is something you should know. This moment is called cross bridge formation. Be aware and recognize when this happens and why it happens. It happens because you have an open myosin binding site. It happens because you have a high energy myosin head. That means that the high energy myosin head wants to, it really, really wants to bind to the open MBS and it does, causing this cross bridge between myosin and actin, specifically the myosin head 
and the actin myosin binding site to form cross bridge formation in other words okay big deal what does this eventually cause this causes the myosin once it binds to its myosin binding site myosin will release ADP plus GI. Why was it there in the first place? Well, look at step one. Myosin has an ATPase, and it breaks down ATP to ADP plus PI. I never said that this just floats away. So it stays there until this moment. Myosin releases ADP plus PI upon binding to what? To the binding site, right? The myosin binding site. Upon binding to the MBS and goes back to, goes back to a low energy state. Okay, remember how we said new connections form and old connections break? This is basically what we're seeing here. Myosin releases ADP plus PI upon binding. That was a new connection that formed and then go, it breaks it. Um, and this is going to cause it to go back to a low energy state. Big deal, what does that cause? When it goes back to a low energy state, while it's doing that, so while returning to that natural at rest low energy state, there's going to be a consequence of binding to my that MBS site. While returning to the low energy state, myosin, the myosin head specifically, pulls, it pulls the thin filament because it's now sort of going from a cocked up position to a relaxed down position. During this movement downwards, the myosin is pulling with it the thin filament toward the sarcomere center. Now, I can't really do this justice besides explaining what happens. That's why I think at this step right here, be sure to look at figure 50.28 because this is a step you will definitely be asked about because it is more commonly and generally referred to as the power stroke. Okay, So this is the power stroke, this step right here. And this is because the myosin head is pulling, power stroking, that thin filament toward the sarcomere center. This is basically the amount of overlap changing right here at this step, the amount of overlap changing. That's what I'll state actually, getting ahead of myself here. The next step is exactly that. The thick plus thin filaments, because you have this movement, this sliding of a filament toward the sarcomere center, the thick and thin filaments increase. Remember how we saw this? increase their overlap. But what do they not do? What do the thin and thick filaments not do? They do not change their length. There is no length change. Never forget that during muscle contraction. Actin stays the same length. Myosin stays the same length. This is why I like to consider, or I like to term this, the idea that this is the sliding filament model, not the stretching filament model. Okay? This is all about sliding between and creating an overlap, not stretching these filaments. And that's exactly what we see. The overlap increases. That's what I was trying to illustrate broadly as an overall result of muscle contraction. And that's what we've just done here. Now, there's going to be some overall consequences of this. After this happens, um, you're going to eventually have a new ATP molecule that's floating around in this muscle cell, a new ATP molecule. Um, sees that there's an open area, an open ATP binding site because this has been released on the myosin head and that's what the new ATP molecule binds to. It binds to the low energy um, myosin head and this also ensures that that original cross bridge breaks, that there's no more connection whatsoever between actin and myosin. That's another new connection forming, old connection breaking, right? And this causes that full, full breakage of the cross bridge. And this eventually entitles or sort of denotes that this is now the end of contraction. Once you have the breakage of the myosin and actin association, and you have a new ATP molecule causing this to go back to normal, you have the end of contraction, or you can say that this is when a new cycle can possibly begin. Lots of stuff going on, lots of stuff going on simultaneously and subsequently after each other. Understand this by visually understanding figure 50.28. And please, please, please look at the playlist. I have some really nice videos of this happening in real time in 3D uh, animation format that really drives home all of these points. 
Keep in mind that there's no length change. This is a big topic here. Only the amount of overlap increases. The Z-line distance also shortens as a result.